Today we're going to be going over a wide receiver football IQ quiz to test your knowledge of the position and ask you a few different questions on how you would run routes versus certain press coverage looks. So if you're not familiar with our quiz style videos, what I do, you guys, is I'm going to show a uh, pre-snap clip here from a wide receiver versus DB rep. We're looking at the uh, Rivals Camp Series wide receiver versus DB one-on-ones today from uh, South Florida and Fort Lauderdale. So ton of talent, ton of talented receivers and DBs. So this would be a great look for you guys. But I'm going to ask you a question about a, ra- a route that is ran versus a specific coverage look, give you a chance to pause the video, think about your answer, and then we break down why your answer is right or wrong. So this is going to be a two-part question. I'll start with the first part, and then we'll get into the second part later on. So first part of this question is, how would you guys run a post route versus this specific coverage? So how would you guys run a 10 to 12-yard post route versus this specific coverage? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So reason why we do these wide receiver quiz videos is because we're trying to work on the mental side of things as a receiver. When you walk up to the line of scrimmage, we post a lot of videos on the physical side of things, drills to do, techniques to do, but you also need to have the mental game locked in. And by the mental game, I mean you see a look from a DB, you know exactly what to look for, and you know exactly how to structure your route based off the DB because that's how you structure your routes, based off of the DB. And more specifically, three things. Number one is coverage. So is he playing man? Is he playing off man zone? Obviously, this is like press man. You want to look for his leverage. So is he inside? Is he head up or is he outside? In this case, he's inside. And then we want to look for the distance he has for me, which is about since we're off the ball, probably about maybe like two yards away. So he's two yards away inside shade press and we have to run a post. So if you guys said, oh, I'm going to give him a fake to the outside, take the inside release and then go, that would be incorrect. Because guys, he's playing inside shade for a reason. He doesn't want to give up the inside route. He doesn't have any help to the inside. His help is ultimately the sideline. So he wants to force you out of bounds and not give up the inside. So that can't be my plan of action is just to force an inside release. He will not give it up. He will get hands. And guys, in a real game, if you run your post and you're on the opposite hash, that's not good. That's not good spacing on the play. So if you said, let's attack him inside, let's try to make him think we're going there, move him to the inside and take an outside release, that would be 100% correct. Now, let's get to the second part of this question. So that's how you would run the route, right? He attacks him inside. He takes this outside release. But What would you do if this DB plays it well? So that's going to be my second part of the question. Let me explain real quick, and then I'll give you a chance to think about it. But if we take that outside release, obviously my goal with this DB is to stack over the top of him. I want him to be trailing my back hip. They call that restacking because when I could trail over the top of him, and or when I get over the top of him and he's trailing me, I could give him a hard fake to the outside, sell with my hips and shoulders, and then run a post. But what do I do if he's maybe faster than me? Maybe he plays it well. Maybe he gets hands, and he's right hip to hip with me. So how would you? guys run the post route at the top of the route when the DB is playing you like this. You guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. Now, before we answer this, you guys, and talk about what you should do at the top of the route, if you're a wide receiver and you would like to improve this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below for our elite wide receiver training package. What you will get access to is an eight-week daily on-field workout schedule for wide receivers. It's eight weeks of route running drills, press release drills, catching drills. We give you the exact video examples of each specific drill and the sets and reps to follow. We also include an eight-week daily gym workout schedule with the examples of specific wide receiver gym exercises to help with speed, route running, single leg balance, etc. We give you sets and reps, rest days, conditioning days, and we also include a 50-minute long video on college recruiting, how receivers can get recruited, and a four-week speed development system because if you guys aren't fast as a receiver, it's tough to play at the next level. So all of that is combined into our elite wide receiver training package. So check out that very first link in the description below if you're interested in that and want to improve your skills this offseason, fellas. Let's get back to this video. So now, like we said, if that DB is playing hip to hip with you and you can't stack him, if you guys said that you wanted to use a throw by move, that would be 100% correct. So what is a throw by move? A throw by move is where you're going to take your inside hand, you swat that DB and you slip underneath him, right? So let's play this thing full speed again. Because obviously, like we said, the goal is to attack and move him inside, take the outside release and restack. If I can't do it, I still have to be able to get separation. I have to have a plan for it. And that's 
swap by move right there is the best way to get separation. Guys, trust me, the quarterback does not care if our break is slightly slower, but we slip underneath him and we're able to get separation. He knows it's man coverage. He knows we have to work this route. He would rather have this, just a slightly slower break, than you force an inside release. And yeah, maybe you're inside of him, but you're running the post on the opposite hash, running into other routes and running into other defenders. So guys, that's how you'd run that post route versus inside shade press. Perfect example here from this wide receiver and great example of how you can use that throw by move to your advantage. Okay, so now next example here. Let's break it down. So how would you guys run a 10 to 12 yard dig route? So 10 to 12 yard dig, if you don't know what a dig is, 10 to 12 yard in. How would you guys run that versus this specific coverage? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So remember, like we said, the whole purpose of these IQ videos to get you guys to start thinking as a receiver, but to get you start thinking fast. You see a press coverage look, you see a zone coverage, off-man coverage look, bam, that plan is on right in your head and you're ready to execute the plan. Because as a receiver, guys, we have to be able to play fast. So this stuff, a lot of it is repetition, seeing different looks, being able to react. So we see the DBs in press. Obviously, that's the first thing. There are three keys, right? What type of coverage is it? Okay, now what's his leverage? Is he inside? Is he head up? Or is he outside? And this case, this guy's head up. He's right in front of me. The midline of his body is even with the midline of my body. If he was inside shade, the midline of his body would be even with my inside foot. If he was outside shade, it would be even with my outside foot. Okay. Now, Second thing we're looking for is the distance. Probably, again, maybe about two yards off, two yards away because we are off the ball. Now, if we have to run a dig route, we always talk about it. Inside shade press. What do you do? You attack him inside, take what he gives you to the outside. He's outside leverage and you have to run a dig. You'd attack his leverage and take the inside release. What if he's right in front of you? That is when you want to take the path of least resistance. So if you said you want to fake to the outside and take the inside release and then break to the dig, that would be correct, guys. If he's head up, he's giving you a release either way. Can this dis DB disguise what he's doing? Yes, and we'll talk about that after I play this full speed. So this receiver comes off, gives a move outside, takes this inside release, gets skinny, breaks it off, and then is able to win on that play. I know it's kind of tough to see, but he does end up getting a catch right here. So let's break this down. Let's talk about it, right? So remember, guys, take the path of least resistance. Why take an outside release when I have an inside breaking route and this DB is essentially giving me the inside? Now, one thing you have to be aware of, though, when a DB is lined up and head up, he could be trying to disguise his leverage. So if you come off the ball and you give this move to the outside like this receiver does, and let's say this DB jumps to the inside, we have to be able to react, put the brakes on, and go. That's why it's so good for wide receivers to work different drills in the offseason that are based off of reacting, right? Like, I have my receivers, like, what I'll do is I'll stand in front of them like this, and I'll have them creep at me, and I'll hold two tennis balls, one in my right hand and one in my left hand, and I'll, like, drop the tennis ball or throw the tennis ball off the ground, and they have to react and pick it up before it hits the ground a second time to train that reaction. Because, guys, a great receiver has a plan, but also a great receiver is able to react off of how a DB plays. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver taking what the DB gives, getting skinny and then breaking this thing right off. Okay, so now next example here you guys. How would you guys run a fade route versus this specific type of coverage. So I'm talking like a deep four verticals fade. I'm talking like four verts trying to take a shot. We're on the 45-yard line and we're trying to send this thing over the top. So how would you guys run a fade route or a streak route or a go versus this type of coverage? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first, as a receiver, we are trying to come up with a plan based off of how the DB is playing. That is how I structure what I'm doing with my route. So this DB is an off-man coverage, right? Eyes are on me. He's about, what, five, six, seven yards away. We're lined up on like the bottom of the numbers, and this DB is lined up like on the middle, slightly top of the numbers. So that tells you that he's inside shade and an off-man coverage. So if I have to run a fade, a lot of guys, when they get this look, they don't know how to attack it. What they'll do is they'll just take off and go run. They just try to beat him with speed and get to the outside. Guys, remember, this DB's job is to not let us go inside and force us to the sideline. If we run a fade and we're two steps from the sideline, that's not a good fade route. That's not enough room for my quarterback. So let's make this DB think that we are running some type of inside route and let's stem him to the inside and you want to use a move called a vertical set. So if that's what you guys said, that in my eyes is how you would run this. That is where you run and you try to attack his toes. You run at his leverage, his midline, because when you run out of DB's leverage, he is going to 
keep his leverage because he is taught, remember, don't give up the inside. And then a vertical set is a hard fake to the inside with your left foot. So, or, or your inside foot, I should say. But that's just to get him to hold. It creates more space for you to the outside and we are able to stack over the top and make this catch. So now remember guys though, one thing this receiver does insanely well is that when he attacks this DB's leverage and he throws this move to the inside, right? He could probably be maybe a little bit closer, but notice how he doesn't make this move and then go straight to the sideline. He gets right past this DB's hip because the whole purpose of the stem, the whole purpose of the move to the inside was to get that DB to move and hold his leverage to create more space for us to the outside. So don't compromise that space and run away from him and go towards the sideline. We want to get hip to hip with him. I want to run right past him. I throw the heart bake inside. I want to run right past him. So now when I have him stacked or have him by a step, that quarterback has plenty of room to drop that ball between the numbers and between the sideline, which is where he ultimately wants to throw that fade.